Good morning. Nadia is literally just over there. She's I'm just, just finishing, finishing I'm just her tea. my milk and yeah. weeping about my makeup bag. I've lost my makeup bag, right? Oh, that's for Nadia. He has got no understanding of what this means. Can you please tell him what this means to a woman when you lose your weight? Well, and a man who might like his makeup bag. Can you please tell him? What it means financially, emotionally. Look, hang on a minute. I know only too well what it means financially. I remember filming in New York with a assistant producer who lost her makeup bag, Ooh. and she and it, she said, "I said, well, classic bloke. I said, well, that's all right. Just get a bit of what do you do? You use eyeliner, mascara, oh and some lipstick." God. She looked at me. I'm not lying. She went absolutely apoplectic because what seems to happen is. It's always the men's fault. Even yeah. though we, we haven't touched it, we haven't seen it, we're not interested in it. She said it was going to cost her £4,000. Oh, God. she was having a lot. Oh, she was, she was crazy. £4,000. I was like, what the fuck have you got in there? Oh. Gold lame stuff for your eyes. Um, well, makeup is expensive. <laughs> Reese Roberts, morning, Mark. Nadia, Mark, have a mini rant ready for Erin Taylor-Johnson, so be prepared for a few, par few paragraphs. Uh, I'm going to have a bit of a chat about the new James Bond. I've got... Uh, anyway, we're going to have a chat about, it, chat about that. Um, we're going to chat about makeup bags, clearly. Why is it that when Nadia loses stuff, it's my fault? Oh, please, Mark, you're putting yourself in real danger now. I don't understand. Do not say that. Is I don't man? understand. Is I don't use... Man? I've made a note in the car that one of your... Um, Oh, what's his name? Tom Ford, sort of what are they called the square thing. Or is it blusher or something? Eyeshadow is in the car. Is in the car, and I've put it somewhere safe for you. What do you want? A fucking round of applause? Yeah, but I didn't lose your bag, Mark. Right, listen. Is there a man on this planet? Sorry, I look rubbish. I've lost my makeup bag. You're very um, loud. That says that that doesn't say whenever he can't find anything. Well, I put it right there. Hang on a minute. I, I never blame anyone. I've said to you, my ha my room is like a madhouse Hang again. On. I said, Hang all on. I've got to do is clear up my room and I'll probably find my makeup bag. I said that. I never blamed you. What she does is even more in, in, insidious than that. What you do is, hang on. You say, get a bit closer. No. <laughs> I've noticed I have to be any closer to you than I already am. Hang on. What you do is you say, has anyone seen? And then everyone gets up and everyone looks. Hang on. Oh, my God. Hang on. Right. Hang this on. This is going to end in, uh, in us on. breaking up. Hang right? on. And then, and then you say, you're not looking. Everybody gets up when yeah, I can't for a find bit, something. For a bit. But, not, but not the whole how, day. How dare you? Right. On occasion... When I've got Did you leave it in Parliament, Faith Goodman's asking? To security. get out. No, but I did leave my phone there, and that was quite a funny incident because it nearly got blown up. <laughs> <sighs> but um, there's been probably three occasions when I've said to everyone, can everyone just help me find it? Now, when any of them oh, lose anything, it's, oh, we need mum God. looking because mum has mum powers and mum can always find stuff. So unless you take it back, I'm not coming. And what the other thing she does is at the moment she's most stressed before something's happening, she throws the cat amongst the pigeons and gets everyone else to jump up and do stuff. Because oh she's stressed. Sweet Jesus. You think that you're safe <laughs> because we're on coffee moaning. No, I there feel, are I feel be like... so many weird ways I pay you back for this. <laughs> and it will spread over months. <laughs> and you won't know because revenge is uh, sweet when it is cold. Hey, are you all right today? No. Clearly. And now you've just made me worse. Is your tea ready? Because you just lied. It's good to see that your oh. yoga has really chilled you out. Morning, everybody. Morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee Mode. <laughs> if you're listening on podcast, apologies. Oh, God, I look so rough. You don't look rough, sweetheart. Oh, I'd but still anyway, we're here. lick your forehead. Forehead? What? I would lick your forehead willingly. Move I on. can't believe the question Move that was on. asked on a show the other Get night. Get to the what? news. Do not start saying things. You're already in trouble. No, and it was now Real Housewives, that conversation they had around the table about licking. Mark, 
terrible. That show is is terrible. Um, Zoe Agnew asks, is it the right time to say you still look beautiful without makeup, Nads? I prefer her without makeup. I really do. Um, I really do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. To who? Zoe. See, I didn't get a thank you. Did you notice that? Welcome to the man family. Nads, you look beautiful. Love your shirt. <laughs> Lee Peer, I'm gripped. Mark in the danger zone is my favourite state, you bastard. In the danger. In the danger. Hey, what is that song? Don't know. Give us a rendition. You do know my story about this shirt. When in the danger women, zone. When you to lose women one day, Jane had this shirt on. I was like, oh my God, I love that shirt. And she was like, oh, I said, where'd you get it? She said, wherever it is. And I bought it last year. I was like, oh, I really like it. Next day, me and the girls were charity shopping. We go and we do all the charity shops in one go. And guess what? This was in the charity shop. Wow. Got it for Fiverr. So interesting. I think Dina got me that. I really like that. Warning may contain nuts. You get it. Uh, and just finally, I just want to share this with you because it makes me laugh. This action figure. Me passing out from standing up too quickly because I'm an old piece of shit. I guess I'll just lie here for a bit. Hours of unconscious fun. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. She looks, but she doesn't read. I did. Uh, Victoria Moore, wow, you're on a roll. What? Aggravating her. Yeah, I know, absolutely. God, don't mind us. You, you want to start sewing something? Darning a <laughs> sock? That's a slow morning. You... Mark, people are on podcasts that we're not what you're talking about. Well, yeah, well, you're the one pouring, it's what is it? Collagen, collagen peptides into yeah. what? Milky coffee, French style without croissants. Okay. Okay. okay, so yeah, we're going to talk about the news. It's always it's always tricky, isn't it? Going from this to semi semi-serious. Okay, we're going to talk about... Freezing eggs, women freezing eggs. Vicky Patterson has talked about freezing eggs. And there was a piece yesterday, actually, about, uh, which I think is a nice counterpoint, about how it's an absolute con that's being sold to women. Well, we'll it's not an that. absolute con. That is not the right thing to say you at all. You are on one. Some what clinics. Is, Jesus, I haven't no, said but you it. you can't say that because people I didn't will be say booked it. in. I didn't say it. Someone people else has said it. In. I can't manage the news to the extent that we don't say guinea pig. God. That's one of the stories. The word guinea pig is on a lexicon or list of words that is, is now must be banned. We're going to explore that because it causes trauma. Um, I want to talk briefly about who the new James Bond is. Uh, we're going to talk about mewing, which is this. But it's not just that. We'll show you what that is later. Um, and uh, we're gonna we're also gonna show you the Kate Middleton footage that, that landed yesterday of her at a farm shop. Um, and there's something else. What's the other thing? Uh, oh, oh, and we're gonna talk about um, well uh, Israel Gaza story. I want to talk about Jonathan Glazer again, the Oscar winner. Uh, and Nadia has there found some footage, or we saw some footage today that's just distressing, and will come with a warning. And we'll come right at the end. Yeah. Uh, Ellen says, Mark, now you have to stop because I really don't want to see you getting killed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so egg freezing. Let's talk about egg freezing first. Um, the story today is Vicky Patterson. Patterson. I was going to say Patterson. Vicky Patterson has said that she's um, freezing her eggs. Uh, she she said, has frozen them. Oh, she has frozen them. Um, and she said that she's really pleased that she's done it. Uh, she said, is that right? Right, so yeah, so she's she's what yeah, there's, the right there's, thing different, myself future there's different layers to this story actually because first of all, um, just the actual idea of freezing eggs because mm -hmm. many people think it's interfering with nature and da da da. Second layer that you know I think women are questioned even more if they're in a stable relationship and that's what she's saying. She's engaged. She's in love. She's 35, so the questions come up, well, why why are you freezing your eggs? And then and I think then another theme of this story is, is that it is not a golden ticket. It's 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 actually she talks very well just about how tough it was. It was much tougher than she thought it was going to be. To do. <clears throat> yeah, I have a I had a friend that went through IVF. Um no, sorry, freezing eggs. 
and and again, it was it was it was very tough. So it's not an easy option. So is I it think actually quite painful? Is it? Quite it difficult? can be. Oh, it can be. But she, and 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 Vicky Patterson actually says that it was a lot more painful than she thought. Wow. It, than she was told it was because the thing is, pain hmm. is is such a subjective thing, isn't hmm. it? I mean, my mum half cut a finger off and told them at the casualty not at casualty not to bother giving her an anaesthetic. You know, it, it depends pain thresholds. Our eldest has the lowest pain threshold I've ever seen. I mean, I've got a higher pain threshold than you. Well, pain threshold is attached to empathy, apparently. So, the, oh, right. Well, so you obviously don't have much empathy. No, I'm joking, winding up. So, so there's lots of layers to this. She's got a glint in her eye. And then also, scary. and then also because you pushed it too far this morning and you're in trouble. They like it when you're in the danger zone. And you are in Lee. the danger zone. Lee likes it in the danger zone, but he's weird. <laughs> Have you and seen Lee's his not, recent calendar? And Lee's not sitting in the area of the danger zone. He's watching it. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and and then the, another theme to this story is that I hate to talk about trolls because I think most trolls are unhappy people that respond to other human beings in a really toxic, negative way. But she has said that she's been trolled for for having her eggs uh, frozen. So I think rather than talking about trolling, it's like, I think if we talk about people that don't believe in it and think that it's, it's I think we need a new day of the wrong. year. I think we need a day of the year called Hug a Troll Day. Mm, because I, they, do. I don't think they get hugged enough. Yeah. Um, okay, so she, <laughs> Lee Pitt, to be honest, I don't actually even feel safe watching the danger zone. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised that your Wi-Fi is, that signal is stable. Oh it's my so God, funny. I must tell you later what Lee did yesterday made us laugh so much. The cab drive nearly, 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 Rashly, he was howling with wow. laughter. Um, but also, first of all, has anybody here had their eggs frozen or is waiting to have their eggs frozen or um, or completely disagrees with it and think it's, it thinks it's interrupt, you know, interfering with nature? I mean, certainly when you read the description of what happens, what truly happens, you know, in, in there from Vicky, it's a lot. And and I think that it's a bit like I think there's a lot of promises made to women that, you know, first of all, we can have it all. We can have a career for as long as we want. And then, you know, in our 40s, we can have babies. It's incredibly difficult to have babies in our 40s. Our physiology hasn't changed. It's at prime time to have babies between 16, isn't it, and 25. That's what we were supposed to die at 40. So that hasn't changed. Um, and I just think. People will say, you hear it, say, oh, I'll just get my eggs frozen. Mm. But but but, you, but I think if you're thinking of that, you really have to look into it early and not delay it and think, oh, when I get to the point that I want to freeze my eggs, then I'll find out about it because it's much more complicated than people think. So, yes, absolutely. And, and that when I say, when I said, you know, there's an opinion that, or there was an opinion expressed earlier this week by, by a conservative MP, who was saying that there's there's a lot of false promises in this the mm. and that she and, and I think there's a couple of angles I want to talk about which are um, a lot of companies are paying for employees to do this as a sort of insurance really? against um, against you know them leaving work well against them leaving work absolutely <gasps> and the, in a weird way that and 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 what, where that becomes I think troublesome is that they're prioritizing work over family. That's fine because, of course, it's very hard in this modern age to combine the two, and so it, it, you know, it's not it's not a bad thing to offer. And a, a lot of companies, I think Apple might do it. Is there a uh, lot, or is it a few? I think it will be a well, few. Well, I think there were only two thousand egg egg frozen egg people last year in this country, so we're not talking mm. about vast numbers anyway. So companies are offering it, but as I understand it, you know, presumably the the, the general idea behind freezing eggs is so that you can have them placed back inside you when you're much older, which, as you've already just said, is when you are more likely to not be able to carry a baby. No, 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 you're not less likely to be able to carry a baby. It's you're less likely to conceive naturally. But it's, is it, it's not about carrying. Does it not follow, though, because one of the things that was being mentioned by uh, the, this Tory MP, Miriam Cates, Mm. Uh, she says it's a false promise. She feels that there are there can exploitative be no corporations, there can't be any promise. Mm. And her line on it is, is that women, a lot of women will be making decisions or, or will be thinking they can mm. delay this yes. and there will be no guarantee. Yeah. So they're sort of parking 
the, the massive disappointment much further down the way. That's why I think it's really important if you are somebody now in your 20s, I think Creatorholic just, no, was it Creatorholic just said, was it Creatorholic? I better be sure. Said that she regrets. I tried to, oh, here we go. Yeah, here. Oh, I tried to donate my eggs, but I just meet, missed the age limit of 35. I always regretted I didn't think about offering them early. Oh, that's so lovely. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's another big thing donation. is egg, do- or egg donation. There's so many people that need that. Wow. Because some people, of course, don't produce an egg. So it's, it's um, somebody there saying they are on their IVF, uh, their second round of IVF, and it's... Uh, oh, no, sorry. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, sorry. Katie Greening. Currently in an IVF cycle, had my egg collection. It's very tough mentally yeah. and physical process. And wow. that's why okay, I wanted I to highlight that. that because it is. It, it is very, very tough. Mm. And I, I, I hear what this um, MP is saying, that you can just delay, delay, delay with just the headline in your head, which is I'm going to freeze my eggs mm. or I'm going to have IVF. And it isn't, there are no guarantees to it. Well, and I didn't realise that actually freezing them you have a time limit and, you know, they, they, defrosting them doesn't always work. And, and so you can think, well, I've got this guarantee of these frozen mm, mm. embryos, but it doesn't necessarily mean. And there have been some kind of absolute outrages with some egg, fro- you know, places that hold these uh, frozen eggs, n- not holding them at the right temperature and then holding the wrong eggs and then handing wow. out the wrong eggs. So, I mean, the message from this article today can was just really read this? do your research on the clinics. And Shak- Shakira... L. Bard says, if egg freezing is a woman's only option and she understands the odds of getting pregnant with frozen eggs, I think it's fine. Me too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I get what you're Absolutely. Saying. Well, I uh, have no problem with, I uh, personally, I don't think, oh, it's going against nature. Mm. It's da-da. because you could say that about practically everything that we now do because mm. we have huge advancements in medical science. So, and the pain of not having a child is so deep it cuts so deep for people and i think to be able to have a chance i think most people who desperately want a child would grab it any chance they can the process costs an average of seven to eight thousand pounds when you factor in storage costs future treatment etc so this is freezing Um, eggs yeah britain's fertility regulator the human fertilization and embryology authority do do themselves say that women should not view egg freezing as a guarantee of mm. having a baby. Now, the where I kind of then parted with this woman, not parted, but where I kind of began to not find what she was saying interesting was when I discovered, and this isn't against Christians, but she holds on to the idea that women need to have children when they're younger and they need to prioritise family before before job and before career. No, so there is a kind a of... Na- narrow view, I think. It's, well, it's a narrow view, but I also think by talking about it like this, it's another way of trying to sort of promote yeah. and push that sort of you know, Agenda. old, old agendas. Exactly. But I think that, um, you know, I think... It, I, think I, I liked what Vicky Patterson was saying here about people assuming that... Once you've got a partner, mm. why on earth would you still have any thoughts about it not being the right time for you? And I think... Sorry, say that again. So so she, she, people will say to her, but you've got a partner, you're 35. Why don't you have a baby? Because she's not ready. She doesn't want to yet. Right. There's other things she wants to do. But she's got... And I mean, she, yeah. But I mean, no, no, but she's mm. frozen her eggs. It, mm. uh, she will still be able to carry it. It will make no difference carrying in her 40s. It's, it's, it's your fertility. But you still be able to... But just because you've frozen your eggs, the conception process still has to happen. No, she's got embryos. Oh. oh she, she's, she's got embryos. And even, even if she did defrost those eggs... She, it would still be the conception would still be done in a. Oh, so it would be clinic. done in the clinic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think okay. so. Well, I don't, don't know. know. No, Did no, no. It? She's frozen her eggs. That's, that's no, an she... embryo. She's got three embryos Has and she? three eggs. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, but 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 either way, I, I think that um, it's just this idea that Ooh, you you, it's still quite a sexist idea, isn't it? What. It's like, well, why don't you just have them now? You're 35. And she's like not ready to have them now. But she you, now has the option I, to choose to I, do I understand. I mean, one can't step stand in someone else's shoes and not understand the inability. And I remember us feeling it a little bit when we didn't know we were going to be able to have a second child. Um, well, the and miscarriage. first, when I had the most yeah, yeah, absolutely. before Maddie. Um, but I suppose, yeah, I mean, you can't step in someone else's shoes if you haven't had children and work out how profound that desire is. I think 
it does generally speak to all of the ideas around, you know, when is medical advancement a positive thing or when can med medical advancement become a sort of something we lean on a bit too much? And I think one aspect of this story that's interesting is that in the last three or four years, the number of people freezing their eggs has has, has exploded tenfold. It's, mm. it's multiplied by ten. And there is a real difference between having IVF because you've looked into it and you found out that mm. you are unable to have children and people seem to be more sympathetic to that but freezing your eggs because you're not ready because you still want to continue with your career mm. or you still want mm. to I think is a bit more frowned on I think that's what Vicky, Vicky Patterson was saying. Really good point Jackie Valino there about uh, people on chemo it's yeah. a great idea um, for cancer patients. I, I, I think it's a great idea you know if yeah. it's right for you then it's right for you but um, yeah just, just don't think there's a guarantee because there isn't. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, moving on. Um, what's mewing? If I said to you mewing, would you know what mewing no. is? What is it? Well, apparently. Well, apart from a kitten. Well, no. Apparently, mewing is this. The, 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 so the the non contentious definition of mewing is apparently the exercises that you do where you press your tongue against the top of your mouth and do various things in your mouth and around your head. To, and move your head in order to kind of keep your jawline, you know, so it's exercises for the jawline, basically, so that you don't get a, 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 what's it called, a double chin and all that kind of stuff. So it's all, all this kind of stuff. Oh, that. Yeah. My friend does that. She, she does facial yoga, Simone. Yeah. And her, fa I mean, it works. There are films, Facial yoga works. There are films and films and films all over the internet yeah. about all of the kind of um, yogi kind of things that you can do for your, for your chin. Um, well, this teacher, uh, apparently, they're, they're, mewing has now evolved in class to, yes, kids doing this with their mouth, but also doing something else. I'll, just, I'll play you this rather than telling you what it is. This is a teacher in America talking about. Right? Trend with students is probably going to be the final reason that I decide to never return to the classroom to teach ever again. Teach if you're not familiar what mewing is, basically, it's a gesture that kids are making towards other people that signal to that person that they don't care what they have to say or they're too busy being silent doing the mewing technique to respond to them. It's basically just another way to be dismissive to somebody. The gesture stems from this technique where people are like thrusting their tongue inside of their mouth to like strengthen their jawline. So hopefully this at least arms you with some knowledge of what that actually means. And when somebody does that to you in the classroom, you aren't gonna feel like such a goon and you can respond in a way that's gonna be more effective. So it's, so if you do that, Apparently, so what's happening in classrooms is kids are, if a teacher asks them a question, they just go. And now I thought, like you said earlier, that that, that, that was like, you're, you're fucked. He's so bloody rude. So as a teacher, you just tell them off for anything else they do is rude. It's, Perhaps, the same, it's just another rude. It's very rude. Anna Leib shoots. It's basically an eye roll. But it kind yeah. of reminded me of some of the things that used to go on in classrooms. There are trends for these weird things. One of them in our class, I don't know if anyone else did this, was called Slaphead. And... Oh, yeah. You would walk was around the park. Well, you would just slap someone on yeah. their forehead. Yeah. But then there was the, I don't know if you remember, the back neck. And oh, the back yeah. neck was when you were working, someone would slap the back of your neck. And then in our class, it evolved into the slap neck, where they would come, slap your back of your neck, and the, it really hurt. But this but, was. I mean, it's just another rude thing, isn't it? It's yeah. no less rude or more rude than eye rolling or sticking your fingers up or. It's TikTok madness again. Tell them off. Throw them out of the class. Anyway. Till they can come back and behave, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I agree. That's mewing. Shall we have a look at Kate Middleton and let's discuss whether we think this is Kate Middleton or not? Because some people are saying it's not Kate Middleton. Here she is at a farm shop. All I want to know is what did she buy? There she is. Is this in Norfolk? Hang on, this is. I think that's not William. No, that's not them. 100% not them. That's what Maddie seemed to have said. Lots of young people are saying that's not them. That is not them. Lots of young people. Maybe Let's that's because they don't need glasses. <laughs> that is not them. Is it not? No. That's those, that, they're, they're uh, lookalikes. 100% not them. I what do you think, guys? Shakira Albad, not them. 
Why do you think it's them? Well, because the press has... Well, this oh, have is they gone mad? Well, no, the press have said... I mean, everyone is reporting it, you know, all on the radio. And it for, well, it's them. You know, at last we've seen that she's okay, she's happy, this should provide the answers. to. It struck me as strange that the only person who should film it was a, apparently a Portuguese tourist uh, from behind a car. But what makes me think that that's Somebody's made a lot of money out of that. That is, that is going to look at lookalikes. But the thing that, I tell you the thing that makes me not believe it, if you were filming it and you thought it was them and you believed it was them, you wouldn't stop filming. There would have been more footage as they walked out of shot. It, it felt too composed. I don't oh, look, think... Grace and Martin, I don't think it's them either. No. Should we have another look? Not for one second. Um, Obviously, straight Jim. away. I don't know if any of you are watching this on a big screen. I mean, this is... Plus, also, no one in the restaurant, look behind them, even looks up. Is that a security? No, there are a couple behind them, not security. That's another thing. Where's the security? Was it, I mean, look, we know about security, because when we were in a restaurant with Harry... Uh, not we weren't with him, but he walked into the restaurant we were in. He had so much, so much security, and that was six. before he was married, and any, any of that was. That, it? Mm, isn't that interesting? Now I didn't. Oh my god, it's it's like embarrassingly not her. It that's what I was in the. She's Maggie's about twenty five. That girl that is saying this is not her. She was shocked that I bought the story. Oh, Jennifer Ingram. I think it's definitely them. Uh, I don't understand why there's such a big thing being made about Kate. She's recovering. End of story. I'm really not interested in what's right. going on with and the world. Right, and Jennifer, that leads us on very nicely to what we're going to talk to talk about next. And anybody that wants to leave now may, because we're moving on to Gaza. Oh. And I tell you why, because it goes on so well from that. Because the the British media, for some reason, think... A woman who's had an operation and is having time off is more important of the, than the slaughter and, and induced famine of a people. That why? How many column inches have been spent on this, right? Let us not forget that it is hell on earth in Gaza and... We are witnessing now, I don't know if anyone saw my post on Instagram the other day, broke my heart. These sweet, sweet children all looking up, half terrified and half hopeful, looking at the planes to see whether it's going to be a bomb or a food drop, right? There are dozens of trucks filled with food and nappies and medicines and the Israeli uh, military are not allowing that into Gaza. Women are having babies with nothing. No no monitoring, no anaesthetic if they need a cesarean, no anaesthetic. And we're talking all the time about a woman who is cared for and looked after and cosseted and adored. White woman versus brown women, thousands of them. No woman or young teenager has had any sanitary products. Women are getting the most horrendous um, infections because they're trying not to drink because there is nowhere clean to go to the toilet. But hey, Let's keep wondering about Kate's photograph. Let's keep everyone distracted. There is a slaughter going on that history will judge us for because it's been live streamed. Mark's mum came down the other day and she's seen some shit. My parents have seen some shit. These people are old. My dad's 90. They haven't witnessed anything ever like this in their lifetimes. That's what they're saying. But my God. We're going to just keep on talking about Kate Middleton. Sazzy makes a point. That's not the Royals' fault. It's the media's fault. No, uh, no, absolutely. I, I'm no, no, not no, absolutely. saying it's no, the no, Royals' not, fault. Yeah. I'm saying leave them alone. Leave them alone. She's all right. You know, whatever's going on for her, she's all right. I feel sorry for the Royals. I feel sorry for Kate. She's had some sort of an operation and she's having time off. And if there's something else going on with their marriage or whatever, what's it got to do with us? What we want to know is how complicit are our governments what money that we have is our hard-earned cash that we've paid in tax is going to support this that is going on out there that will be in the history books and there will be shame for people 
that, 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 that knew nothing about it and didn't say anything. There will be, because it's all recorded. And, and children now are dying. Save the children, keep on posting. They will either die of the bombs or starvation. Mm. That is the option for those children. Save the children. O over and over they're saying that. But is it reported? No. Well, it, it is reported. Not, not in the no, papers no, no, I'm no, talking no. about. Well, no, no, no. And, well, it, it is reported. But looking at the report on the Al-Shifa hospital assault again yesterday, it's the tried and tested argument that Hamas are there. Everything is, is you know, everyone is... Hamas are putting, you know, civilians in front of them. They're hiding that, you know. And the, one of the other things that gets kind of missed in all of this is the fact that it's such a densely populated place. Uh, even if you didn't want to be near Hamas, you probably couldn't be near Hamas. But it doesn't justify the constant collateral damage. And I have to say, I think we've got to a point now which is really quite for us, really dangerous. Terrifying. Where you know the West knew this was going to happen through pass through pacifying Israel. Israel knew this would eventually happen. All the PR teams, because don't believe it, PR teams are working on the propaganda all the time. Everyone on involved in the tacit support of this, you know, uh, plausible genocide, to quote the ICJ, everyone who's involved in this knew, knows, and has sort of precedent that the intensity of attention that can be given to it can't sustain itself, least of all because the press doesn't cover it. The only place you can get absolute behind the scenes uh, footage and information about what's going there isn't just through individuals posting stuff, which of course you need to be able to verify, but is through Middle Eastern or Arab um, news broadcasters such as Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera's Arabic correspondent was taken hostage prisoner yesterday. and hostage yesterday by Israel. Al Jazeera uh, issued such a strident, uh, you know, appeal, public appeal, saying that what they're doing is constantly trying to endanger and intimidate. Any form of journalism. Any journalism. I don't understand why not one single British paper has even stated this. Just this. Why won't they let journalists in? Why has that question not even been asked? I haven't heard it asked. Why won't they let journalists in? They can't there say are. it's safety because journalists are willing to take that risk. I've seen journalists now on Sky and on CNN saying they won't let us in. They, they won't let us in. No, no, we know why. And, and, we literally no, no, know why. No, I know, but they are saying that and that's not even getting reported in the way that it should be because yeah. it's an outrage. Mm. We all know why they're not letting them in. Pete. Now, we never, we have never played on here the multiple, multiple videos that have been posted by the Israeli military of what they are actually doing, the war crimes. You know why? You know why? Because I find the humiliation of those prisoners so horrendous that I can't bear for other people to see it. But this one today got me so badly and I thought I'm now not going to put a ban on posting these videos that are posted on their, they post them on their accounts. So they're not ashamed of these videos. This is, there are many of them out there. And this one for me this morning near broke me again. I, I, I just, I, when, I'll be playing the sound. Can we play the sound or not? Um, or do we need we'd... to explain? So this is a French man, a Frenchman who has, um, who's in the Israeli army. And um, he is, are you going to play it with the, shall we talk through it? As in, do you want me to turn the volume down? Do, well, do you, did you say that we need to? No. Oh, okay. No. Uh, just be warned. Now, you don't see... This is and, upsetting. You don't see... The, there's no dead Blood, bodies. No, there's no death. No. Um, it's and, the humiliation of a human being. Yeah, it is a... Well, you'll see, and Nadia will explain. Oh, 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 Sur les pierres. Ah, enculé de ta mère. Vous avez vu ces petits fils de putain là Regardez, c'est pissé dessus. Regarde, je vais montrer son dos. Ils ont torturé. Vous avez vu son dos Non. Vous avez vu ça Can we just explain what was on his back Do you know what was on his back 
I, I didn't look too closely. Well, it was published. It was published elsewhere marks. yesterday. It was the Star of David had been cut into his back. So this, this is the oh foot. Yeah. So when I say that's one of the less humiliating videos that's the least shock, that we not seen. least shocking, it's and, shocking. But, uh, and do you yeah. remember ages ago I said to you, Piers Morgan had put out a post, why are the generals, why are the generals of the Israeli army not stopping their, um, whatever they're called, um, soldiers, whatever, um, from posting these videos? Because it's making them look like monsters. And I tell you what my theory is on that is that they think that they can do whatever they want because we saw the video of, I can't remember the man, the name of the man now, telling them that on October the 9th. He goes, all rules are off, just do what you want. I think it's and so they feel that they can do anything and then post it and there'll be no problem. No, 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 I'll tell you what. I mean, it doesn't take a sort of really sophisticated or clever psychoanalyst or psychotherapist to know exactly why so much of this stuff is landing on social media. Interestingly, social media that, let's not forget, Keir Starmer said, I'm shown stuff or I'm sent stuff all the time. I refuse to look at it. It suits the government and it suits, it. it suits them to literally, and this is where omission is a form of admission to guilt. Because what they're simply saying is, we won't look at anything. So what are you saying, Labour? You won't look at anything unless it's in the Telegraph. You, be clear, where is a sanctioned source of news when you're not allowed, allowed journalists any journalists in there. in there? So hang on, so you've got that, and he's a human rights lawyer. I will not let Keir Starmer off the hook on this ever. Remember, it's um, okay to turn water off. It's okay to turn water yeah. off. Seven, days, it took, seven, seven to nine days it took him before he could roll back on that. But he's a humanitarian lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about this that I think is much more concerning is the fact is is the extent to which this stuff has been posted speaks to something very clear, which is all this stuff about the radicalization and brainwashing of people in Palestine by allegedly members of UNRWA. Clearly, the antipathy and hatred and hostility towards the Palestinians and the idea that they are not humans is not so humans. embedded, is yeah. so intrinsic, is so truthful to them that they don't see this as wrong they don't i sent you that video didn't i, I mean i wouldn't post That's it because nobody would have listened to it but because she was like an older woman and she was an academic and she was um she had previously been a zionist and she was a teacher and she she explained you know i thought do you know what i feel so sorry for those young people in the army because she said they haven't got a chance they're brainwashed from such a young age that these people aren't human that mm. palestinians aren't human mm. and so um i feel sorry for them because they're put in as i've said before into the army at 18 when their brains are so malleable having been through a school system where they're told that these people aren't human and then you're right, they don't see them as human. I'm telling you now, conscription in Israel is an opportunity to brainwash as many of the young generation coming through as possible. This idea that this is a sort of reputable, like a reputable army, um, you know, and it's like... it's the most, What was it, Netanyahu? He said the most moral army in the... No, the most yeah. moral yeah. army in the world. That's what he said. The most moral. Now, I also, off the back of this, John, just want to briefly talk about um, Jonathan Glazer one more time, because I will not only not let Keir Starmer off the hook, but I will not stop defending the director of the zone of interest. So this is the story that um, numerous, numerous actors, members of uh, the sort of creative industry, Hollywood, etc., cetera, including a few kind of lesser known British sort of actors and what have you, um, They've signed uh, an enormous letter denouncing Jonathan Glazer's speech at the Oscars in which he said he refutes his Jewishness being used as a kind of justification uh, for the occupation. Uh, he made the film about uh, Auschwitz, an incredibly hard-hitting, powerful, thoughtful, nuanced, difficult, um, a film that will have in involved all sorts of agonizingly difficult decisions, emotions, a journey for him and the actors and, you know, for many people who, who who have relatives and people who've come out of the Holocaust, you know, and these stars who have signed this letter and I've gone through the list and it's a curious list of, 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 of people who have not even got the capacity to understand what this film means or what it is about. This is bullying. This is bullying of a creative guy who is Jewish, 
who has made an incredibly meaningful film that encourages a more nuanced debate and discussion, who isn't one-sided, who's asking us all to see parallels in all of our behavior. He named October the 7th. He named Israel as having had their victims. He also named uh, Gaza and Palestine. The fact that you can't support or get on board with this because you are so blinded by a Zionist pr sort of propping up of the Israeli government's approach is outrageous. This is this is public bullying. He knew how bad it was going to be because he was shaking all the way through that speech. Yeah. He was so brave. Yeah, and his two producers, one of his producers is part of the, the, the clamouring sound to bully him. Uh, I would like One of his producers? Danny Cohen, the guy I said, who oh. I was worried about, former head of the he's, BBC. He's producer of the film. Of the exec, exec oh. yeah. yeah, his own producer is, is, has pushed push back against him. Um, I, I would like to say, though, in, in Jonathan Glazer's defence, others who have spoken out in support of him include the Israeli military veterans organisation Breaking the Silence, who themselves, so these yeah, are former IDF watch, members. Go follow them on Instagram. They said Glazer took an unequivocal stance against the cynical utilization of Judaism and the Holocaust in the name of justifying an occupation. We refuse to accept the ease with which the blood and lives of civilians is used as a justification for political ideologies or as a bargaining chip. Empathy is not a zero sum. Game. And they, they 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 are a group that are made up of people that have left the Israeli army, aren't they? And they've, they're very powerful stories. They're both on uh, Instagram and on YouTube. Just give the name of them again. Uh, Jewish uh, breaking the silence. Breaking the silence. Sign. Sign. Yeah. But please do check out the list. You might be a little bit sort of uh, you, you may cock an eyebrow at a few of the names on there. But I think this is absolutely outrageous. They are trying to bully him. Laced through this long list of names is. You won't work again in Hollywood. Mm. I don't think he's vaguely interested. It takes him 10 years to make a film. He will get his finance. He will get his money to make whatever new film he needs to make. It's absolutely outrageous. Mm. I'm, it's horrifying. Um, and finally, finally, I just because I did promise Reese, you're right. Aaron Taylor Johnson, just moving back to sort of sticking within, if you like, the, the sort of fluffy end of show. But Aaron Taylor Johnson has been or is about to be announced as the new James Bond. I have to confess, I... I can't see it. I don't know who Aaron Taylor Johnson. Sam Sam Taylor Johnson's uh, husband. He was oh. in Kick Ass. Oh, he was in Bullet Train. He, he's the new Bond. He's going to be the new Bond. What, let definitely. Me, let me show you. A, yeah, there he is. Yeah. Oh. So he's signing. The, the idea is that he's signing the contract today. Wow. Um, uh, guys, what do we think? I I just find him a bit reedy. And a bit thin. Uh, Reese Roberts, that was 14, 15 years ago. Since then, he peripherally has appeared in films in a serviceable, but by hardly any means remarkable for me. I mean, one of the things that I think is important about Bond is, and we mustn't forget... You don't have to be a great actor. No, and also you don't need to be a great actor, but also you don't really want to have such a star status that you're associated with anything else. If you think when Daniel Craig came into it, he wasn't like known as such and such. I mean, it's one of the problems with playing Bond as well, is that afterwards you're, you're kind of struggling too. Um, so I, I was. I tell you who I was hoping would get it. Theo James from the Gentleman. I saw which you, I think he's got a. He's got the ability to do irony. I, I just everything I've seen Aaron Taylor Johnson in, I've just found him a bit weak. I just don't know him. Well, okay. Um, Christopher Cundall, you've just gifted fifty memberships. I know you're oh, recovering the moment. Christopher, sending you love. I hope you're feeling better, Please matey. Don't spend you are. The, I love your rock and roll lifestyle, though. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to wherever your next flying to. Very sweet. To, yeah, you. you're, you're, Thank you're, you. You're an absolute gem. You really are. And Stacey Randall has given ten as well. My God, guys! One day we're going to have to ask people that have been gifted. Yes. Um, gifted uh, memberships how they felt about the membership what yeah. it's been like yeah. and, and so these lovely people that are gift them can get a bit of feedback you've got another pre-recorded sunday show coming this weekend it is a nice on sundays it's a nice calm antidote to all of our frenzied craziness though i have to confess i find it really hard to stay calm within the show uh just to, going back to uh Aaron taylor johnson i said to hubby when i saw him in bullet train that he'd get to his one true seeker 101 i thought he was like a young eric idol in um Who? in in bullet train Aaron Taylor Johnson. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, we'll see how well he plays Bond. No, not James Bond, says Deborah Holsworth. He needs a haircut, says Faith Goodman. Um, 
He's quite a good actor. Time will tell. I Who? love Daniel Was there Craker. somebody that you did want? Theo James, I just said. Yeah, Theo Sorry. James. That's all right. Theo James from The Gentleman, I think, would have made a brilliant, because he's kind of on the Don't ascendant. Know who he is, either. He was that show that me and Kiki were watching oh. the other night that you didn't like. Uh, Reese Roberts, then if we take a look at past bonds with your Roger Moore, Sean Connery, or Pierce Brosnan, they were undeniably charismatic yeah. and charm. It's, chari- and wit. it's charisma, charm, and wit. I haven't felt charisma once. I mean, from Roger Moore wasn't. Was a terribly wooden actor. Oh, he wasn't very good, actually, was he? But mm. he had did have charisma. Mm. Sean Connery is my favourite Bond, without a doubt. Mm. He was, yeah. I have to say, I mean, at the beginning, I like Daniel Craig. Uh, and finally, I just, I just, I just, it became a personal thing with Daniel Craig because I used to just hate every single moaning. thing he ever said in an interview, where he would moan on and on and on about being a movie star, and yeah. it was like, pack your bags and go home. You know, you, how many millions are you earning? Don't do it. Don't make a film and then moan about it. Okay, well, uh, guys, obviously, we're going to go back to trying to find her makeup bag. Um, which Stephanie, finally, <laughs> he was pretty hot in the John Lennon film, so hopefully capable of oh. sexy. sexy. The name's Bond, James Bond. Okay, guys, lots of love. Have a good day. Something will be landing. Oh, it's, is it Curly Cooks later? Yeah. Curly Cooks. Curly is... Cooks are live tonight. Live tonight. We're just playing with the time but and in that live i will be announcing who won the cinema tickets from the uh no name sunday show live show it on will sunday. be early evening early evening all right guys have a lovely day and we are now going to